Thank you for being here today, and let, let, me, uh, let me preface this before we get started, all right? I love you. <laughs> I love you. I, I love you. Y'all know when any good parent talks to its children, or any good child leader tries to talk to people, and they try to preface, say, listen, this is where the rubber meets the road today. And I would not be, be much of a leader, much of a pastor, if I just sat back and didn't preach truth. I Man, listen, truth sometimes is hard to chew up and to swallow. It's hard to accept sometimes. But I, I'm, I'm excited that you're here. God is here. I, I'm, I'm excited about a lot of things. And here's what I'm more excited about. Listen to this. Even though America has backslidden, <laughs> even though America and me and you have turned our backs on God, we have. Every one of us have turned our backs on God one time or another. God has never left us, turned his back on us. God is here right now. Even America's in a mess right now. God says, I love America. Come on, somebody. It's good. How many of y'all thankful that God's hand is still on America? Now, listen, I think it's, I think it's moving farther away from her. And we're going to talk about that today, but I'm excited that God is still saving God's still delivering. God's still setting people free. I believe that. So before I start preaching, I, I, I want to let you guys know something that where I'm going today. I will never, ever, 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 ever tell you how to vote. I will never tell you how to vote or who to vote for. But I will share with you, listen to me, from the Word of God, what to stand for. Not, not who to vote for, but what to stand for. And there's a difference there. I'll never tell you to vote Democrat or Republican. I'll tell you to vote whoever stands closer to the Word of God. That, that's what I'll, I'll stand for today. So I want y'all to pray for me because, listen, uh, I, I've, I'm, I'm shaking in my shoes up here because I remember four years ago how, how bad it was. But I'm hoping and praying that we've grown up a little bit, that we, we're closer to God now. Uh, but I, I want to share with you from the Word of God what to stand for. Listen, Tuesday, November the 3rd, Tuesday, November the 3rd, will want to be one of the most crucial votes America has ever seen. Ever. Ever. You say, Brian, now I can hear some of you, I, I feel it. Don't, don't ever bring politics into the church. Who, who said that? I want somebody to stand up if you know, if you said that politics and preaching and teaching and government should not be in the church, you should never preach on it, show me one verse. Out of 31,173 verses, give me one. Listen, the reason why the government and our world is in the shape that she's in is because the church has become silent. We, we've become silent. We, we've, we've sitting back and we're just taking it whatever happens. And so today, listen to me, listen, I want to encourage each one of us, some of you, I've already voted, but it's important, I want to ask you guys to stand up, speak up, pray up, and go vote it up on November the 3rd. So the title of this sermon, if y'all ready, how many y'all ready? Y'all probably more ready than I am. But this is what God said, and I'm going to stand before God, and I'm going to, I have to give an account on every word that proceeds from my mouth. But I know this is coming from the Bible, so I know I'll be okay on this one. So to the, title, the title of my sermon is No More Silence. Everybody say, No More Silence. Everybody else say, No More Silence. Everybody say, It's time to speak up. Come on, everybody say, It's time to speak up. Yeah, no more silence, and it's time to speak up. No more silence, it's just time to speak up. No more silence, it's time to speak up. Nobody dies and goes to hell in South Central Kentucky. We're going to be a force to be reckoned with. God says, where two or three come together, touching and agreeing, I'll be in the midst. You and God are the majority. It don't take an army to win. All it takes is you and God to win. That's all it takes. So today, if, if you have your Bible, I'm going to read some scripture really quick. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Esther chapter 4, verse 14. I'm reading out of the ESV. Esther chapter 4, verse 14. And then I'm going to be flipping over to, to Nehemiah. I'm going to set the foundation. We're going to build upon it. Esther chapter 4, verse 14, the Bible says, For if you keep silent at this time, <laughs> if, if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise 
for the Jews from another place. Here's what it's saying pretty much. If you don't speak up, I'm going to send somebody who will. If the church don't speak up, God's going to find somebody with a T-rail backbone that will stand up and say right is right and wrong is wrong. And he says this, if you don't do it, I'm going to send somebody from another place, another direction to speak up. But you and your father's house will perish. I wonder why churches are perishing. People are falling off by the wayside. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. He's saying if there's ever a time for the church to be of the church and to come alive and to stand up and to speak up and to pray it up and to vote it up, today is the day for such a time as this. Today is the day. Somebody say today is the day. So right now's it. Right now's it. Now listen, I'm going to read a Nehemiah chapter 1. I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but there's a verse in there that stood out in my heart as I was preparing. Today may be more of a preaching teaching, but I, I, we'll get there. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So listen, Nehemiah chapter 1, you can read the whole chapter. There's a verse in there that says these words. Listen to this. Perry, this is crazy. It says these words. Here stood a great city that was destroyed by silence. The city was destroyed by silence. The city was destroyed by silence. Now, what God spoke to me, listen to this. If America is destroyed, she'll be destroyed because of the silence of the people. The silence of the people. I want y'all to lean in. And I want you to listen while I'm under the unction of the Holy Ghost. The hands of this nation are on the threshold of the church. God equipped the church. God did not equip the government. He equipped me and you, the church, to help people. The government just took over the church. And why did the government take over the church? Because the church became silent. The church became silent. And shame on the church for being silent. Listen to this. Listen to this. We as a, a na we're watching our nation, our freedom, our morals be washed away. Y'all realize that, right? It seems like what made America great at one time, our forefathers, and people who fought and left blood on the field to get me and you where we're at today, we just won't forget about that stuff. What used to make America great no longer is even a conversation in people's lives. Men and women who died for us, bled for us, wrote the Constitution for us. Violence is in this land. Our teenagers are dying in the streets. Murder is at an all-time high. Suicide and abortion. As I'm preaching today, over 72 million babies have been aborted since 1973, Roe versus Wade. Does that bother you? Well, you can't be silent about it no more. You can't, we cannot sit back and let another baby be aborted. I'm passionate about this. I've lost two babies. I know what I'm preaching today. Church, you better wake up. Mm. While the church just sits back and we're idle, we don't stand for nothing because we think we're going to offend somebody. Uh -huh. I can see right now, it's going to get right in here today. We, we think we're going to offend somebody by telling them truth. So instead of telling them truth, we sit back, we compromise, don't say a word, and watch 72 million babies be aborted. Watch this, until America repents, we're murderers. I'm just telling y'all what God spoke in my spirit. And this is tough. I was nervous all week. I said, God, please give me another word. God, please give me another word. I don't want to get attacked again. I don't want people to cuss me out again. I don't want to. God says, Brian, if I'm for you, the whole world can come against you. We got to believe this word. We got to believe what God says. 
And for some odd reason, God has left America on the map. So there's still purpose for America. There's still purpose for the United States. Uh, hallelujah. And oh, by the way, one out of two marriages, listen to this, one out of two marriages end in divorce. We're not healthy. Joe Biden, I hope he listens to this. He said it is okay for an eight-year-old to decide their gender, whether they're a male or a female. I got more people that will fight me over, over being a Democrat or a Republican than 72 million babies who have died in their mother's womb. Shame on America. Shame on Christians. <laughs> oh, Pope Francis. He endorsed same-sex civil unions. He said it's okay. The Pope said this, by the way. It's okay for two males to marry. It's okay for two females to marry. And that goes totally against God's word. You know what America wants? Here's what America wants. I finally, I, I believe when I'm preaching to you, we want to live a compromisable, justifiable life and receive God's blessings. He does not work like that. The same God who wrote, who wrote the Bible is the same God in Elkhorn today. And I highly advise, I highly advise me and you to wake up, shake up, stand up, speak up, pray up, and vote it up. I'm preaching better than y'all acting today. It's all right. It's all right. Hallelujah. Every 73 seconds, a woman gets raped. That's not okay. Ron, you, you upset? I am. I'm going to be. This infuriates me. It upsets me how we as the church are setting back idle, compromising what God has done for me and you, thinking we're going to offend somebody. I'd rather offend you and you go to heaven than you love me and die and go to hell. It's time. Elkhorn, y'all lean in. These, this, this election, I'm telling y'all, you can do whatever you want to do. You can get mad at me all you want to. I'm telling you, listen, and if you don't vote, you ain't got no juice up in my life. If you, if you don't go vote, quit complaining. Quit, don't say a word. You got an opportunity to change this, this culture, this generation. Uh, oh, let me, let me give y'all one more. This is going to really get y'all going right here. Planned Parenthood takes $500 million of your tax money. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, uh. All right, Holy Ghost. Planned Parenthood takes $500 million of, of your tax money. They, and they abort babies. Listen, I'm not going to abort them. You know what else they do? I'm going to tell y'all it's time for us to listen to what's happening to your tax money. Brian, I don't believe you should be preaching like this. This church may not be for you. But as for me in this house, we're, we're going to stand on the Word of God. We're, we're, we're going to preach the truth. We're, we're going to say, you know what? Enough is enough. We need Jesus back in this nation. We need Jesus back in our churches. And hallelujah, America won't be great again until we get a great God back in back in America. Somebody give God praise in here today. Yeah. I, I celebrate that God is alive. And listen, there's still hope. They take $500 million of your tax money and they abort babies. Then here's, listen to me. This is going to mess some of you up because I told you all about the lamb. Some of y'all get more torp about killing a lamb than you do a baby. They take $500 million of your tax money, abort the baby. Then listen. They chop the baby in two, into pieces. And, are you okay? Don't, don't tell me how you vote is not important. They, they abort the baby. They chop the baby up in pieces. And then they sell the baby parts for profit. 
They're murderers. And when we sit back, are y'all okay? Please just help me this morning. Because, man, I'm struggling up here. I'm going to be honest. I'm struggling. But I'm just telling y'all truth. That's murder. Church, we cannot be silent no more. If there's every time we got to stand up and speak up and pray up and stand up for what God said, not what you said, not what the pastor said, thus saith the Lord. What does God say about it? That's what we got to do. Not time to shut up, it's time to stand up. Hallelujah. Where, where's the voices of outrage right now? Where, where's the Christians at right now? Where's the church at right now? Listen, I know we're in Campbellsville, Kentucky. But we still must stand for truth. I'm telling y'all, one person can change a culture. One person can change a generation. One Holy Ghost Spirit-filled follower can change a home. It's not time to back off and fuss about the Bible, fuss about what you believe and what you don't believe. Watch this. It don't matter what you believe or what you don't believe. God is right. He's still God. He's still holy. He's, it's just God. Just the way it is. It's just what it is. I declare war on violence. I call that old murder and spirit of, of abortion out. I call suicide. Homosexuality. It's wrong. Adultery, porn. Let me go on now. Overeating. I know we're getting the big top 10. You say, Brian, boy, you need to adjust on that one. You're right. You're right. But watch this. Sin is sin. Sin. God will take this nation back. God wants to take this nation back. I'm going to show you just a moment of Scripture where God still loves America. God wants America back. This is, God created us. We didn't create ourselves. You, listen, you realize eight years ago, everybody say eight, eight years ago, in the election, Mitt Romney was beat by Barack Obama by four million votes. Check me out. Mitt Romney was beat by Barack Obama by four million votes. <laughs> Guess how many evangelical Christians stayed home and didn't vote? Four million. A silence. Silence. That's silence. And I can hear some of you say this. I wrote this in my notes. Well, Brother Brian, I like talking like eggs. It makes me feel, I just, I understand. <laughs> well, Brother Brian, I'm just not going to vote this year because I don't like either one of the candidates. I've heard that from evangelical Christians. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Sit back. Be silent. Don't say a word. And not only will they not take prayer out of school, they're going to try to shut the churches down. I'm telling y'all, I may go to jail over this one. Y'all better come visit me. Write me a letter or something. I'm telling y'all, <laughs> your vote matters. I'm telling y'all, whether you like this kind of preaching or not, we need this kind of preaching behind the pulpits of America. We need preaching like this back behind the pulpits of America. Four million Christians said eight years ago, I'm not going to vote. All I'm telling y'all do is listen, go vote, go vote, go vote, go vote. See, because listen, when you don't vote, you do vote. When you don't vote, you do vote. Now, I'm not listening to me. Listen, hallelujah. I'm not asking you. I got to preface this stuff because we still live in a, a Tinkerbell generation where people will take segments of this sermon and try to run over me in a bus. Listen to the whole sermon, hallelujah. Listen to all this song. I'm not asking y'all, lean in. I'm not asking y'all to vote Democrat or Republican. I'm asking y'all to vote Bible. I'm asking y'all to vote Bible. Vote Bible. Vote Bible. Hallelujah. Culture has changed. Y'all realize that? Yeah, America has changed. A lot of things have changed, but I know one man. I know one man that has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's still God. He's still on the throne. Somebody give him praise in this house. I'm just telling you, he's good. Come on, church, he's good. He's good. He's still God. 
He's still holy. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have too many silent churches. We have way too many silent pulpits. Listen, you better be careful when you say, God, anoint me. Because y'all realize to get the oil has got to be the crushing of the grapes. Huh. So here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. We got too many silent people, churches, pulpits, communities. Think about this again. The Bible said, here stood a great city. A great city. A great city that was destroyed by silence. I'm going to let that sink in just for a moment. Here stood a great church. But because they did not speak up, the doors were shut. Now, I'm going to tell you all something. If somebody tries to shut the church doors here, I got some big old deacons. And I got a good church family here. And you better learn how to stand up and fight for what you believe in. It's not time to back off. It's not time to settle down. It's not time to hush up. It's time to stand up and say, no, this is God's house. And if you're going to come in, you've got to take me out. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, you better lean in and listen to me. If the government or ever overtakes things, the first thing they're going to try to shut down is the church. Because they know the church, if they can take the head off, the body will fall. Huh. No more silence. Look at your neighbor and say, no more silence. No more, no more silence. No more silence. And listen, I'm going to go ahead and preface this a little bit too. If there was a Democrat or Republican or Independent that was running and had morals about themselves and lined up with the Bible, I don't care if they're Democrat, Independent, or Republican. I vote for them. I vote for them. And watch. Y'all get, get over the Democrat stuff. Get over the Republican stuff. Get back to the Bible. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm trying to be good. I had people get mad at me for preaching truth here in this church. Why don't you get mad at the doctors? Can I get, can I get R on you? Get mad at the doctors. Who takes that needle? Oh, let's, let's get mad at the doctors and the insurance company who pays for it. The abortions. Now they're saying, let the baby get nine months old. Full-term pregnancy. Let that baby come out. And if you don't want that baby... <laughs> yeah. We'll just kill the baby at, at nine months. Full term pregnancy, your government says that's okay. Church, no more silence. No more silence. Hallelujah. No more silence. Everybody say that. No more silence. No more. Now, listen, we ain't going to be buttholes. I'm still from Kentucky. Y'all bear with me. I get torp over stuff like this, man. I do. I'm telling you right now, if a devil were to come me, I'd whack his head. I'm telling you. We're not going to be mean to people. We're not going to say to them, you're, you're going to hell. You're all hell bent. No, don't do that. You be Jesus to them. But you stand for truth and the word of God. Quit wavering. Quit being tossed back and forth by the seas, by the waters, by what people think about you. Come on, T-Rail backbones. I need some T-Rail backbone Christians is what we need. We need a church to grow up, amen? Get off Similac. Get off milk. Start eating the meat of the word. Uh, Ten said it. That's all right. Now, I pray this sermon rattles you. Because if you get mad at me, you got problems. If you get mad at me for standing behind this pulpit and preaching truth, backing it up with the Word of God, 
You are the issue. You are the problem. I feel John Hagee rising up in me right now. Ha! Lord, 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 God, help me, Jesus. I hope this sermon stirs you up, drives you up, drives you to your knees for Tuesday, November the 3rd. It's important. And again, I'll never tell you how to vote. Did y'all hear me? Because don't be putting words in my mouth. I will never tell you how to vote. But what if I told you I'm going to give you four absolutes in the Bible? I'm, I'm almost done, I promise. Listen, it's only five after 11. We're good. I'm going to give you four absolutes. And before you vote... I'm going to ask you to think about these four things I'm getting ready to give you really quick. I'm not going to go deep, deep in them, but I'm going to give them to you. There's third, there's three, November the 3rd, Tuesday, November the 3rd. I want you to think about these four things before you vote. And here's the main one, y'all ready? Take Jesus to the booth with you. Let Jesus go before you. Yeah. Number one, is the person I'm voting for pro-Israel? Yeah, come on. Is the person I'm voting for pro-Israel? One of the greatest things, now President Trump, he's an idiot sometimes. He is. He needs, well, never mind. I'm, I say, I got to step in my lane. I got to step in my lane. But here's the truth. One thing that he did do right is by moving the embassy back over to Israel. That's prophecy. That's Bible. That's good. Come on, somebody. Is the person you're voting for, are they pro-Israel? Number two, is the person you're voting for pro-life? Pro-life. Pro-life. That life matters. It, it's proven that at conception, the baby is forming a heart. Little eye sockets. It is important. To, listen to me, we, got, we have been robbed. Y'all think about this, 72 million babies have died since 73. Do you realize how many generations that is? Do y'all realize what the devil is doing? Really, not only, hallelujah, not only is he trying to take out people, he's taking out generations. And if he takes out generation after generation after generation, we need life. God says, I come to give you life and life more abundant. I didn't come to steal, kill, or destroy. We got a God that while you was yet in your mother's womb, he ordained you and birthed you with purpose. Every one of you have got purpose. Number three is the person that you're voting for pro-family. Marriage is between one man and one woman. I, I didn't say that. I believe that. Marriage is between, Brian, you're just old school and you don't understand culture. Listen, how old are you? you you 20 some years old trying to tell God who's in, in eternity that, God, you messed up when you made Adam and, and Eve. But here it is. What God created still stands. God created a man and formed a woman. It's still Bible. It's still biblical. Family matters. God never created two men to come together and marry. And listen, I'm going to take some hell over this one. It's okay. But I'm telling you, marriage is still between one man and one woman. And that's a fact, Jack. You can take it to the bank. It's the only way God's going. It's going to work. It's the only, only way it's going to work. And you've got preachers standing up holding the Bible. Ordaining them. Now listen. You may have, you may have battled with that in your life. I'm just here. You may have been a person under my teaching today that may have even had an abortion. Listen, God can forgive you. God loves you. You're here today not listening to me. You're hearing a word, thus saith the Lord. God can restore you. God can forgive you. God wants to bless you. God wants to make it right. Somebody help me preach in here today. You never know who you're sitting by. God can forgive you. 
He has me. How many of y'all been forgiven? Ain't that good? But make sure, make sure the person you're voting for is pro-family. Pro-family, one man, one woman. Hallelujah. And is the person number four, the person I'm voting for, are they pro-Bible? Pro-Bible. Pro-Israel, pro-life, pro-family, and pro-Bible. Those are the four conditions that I vote for. And I'm, I'm not backing off that. I, I, it's just who I am. It's who God created me to be. My God, listen, what's going to happen the next four years? Listen, I want our religious freedoms back. Yeah. I, I won't. I'm not making light of COVID because it's real. But you know what bothers me more than COVID? Is some of you may be under my voice today and don't even have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you were to die, if you were to take your last breath, it's going to be more than COVID you're dealing with. It's going to be an eternal fire where the worm never dies. You say, Brian, you really believe that? Every word, every word, every word. I don't understand it all, but watch this. I just believe it all. I just believe every bit of it. Brian, you believe in prophecy? Every word of it. Brian, you believe in tongues? Every word of it. Brian, you believe that Peter really walked on water? Yes, I do. I believe all of it. I don't pick and choose what, what's good for me. The Bible's tough. It's hard. I want my children and my grandchildren. I thought about my grandson who's two years old. What's he going to have to deal with? I want the glory of God to, to fill this earth again. I want to experience an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Church, we're so blessed in here. We're so blessed in this house. But guess what? God didn't create us to stay in here. He created us to go out there. We are the salt and we are the light of this world. What we've got should add flavor and add light to everybody else's life. It should. But what's happened? The church has become silent. Become silent. So, Aaron, I want you to put 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. We, we say this, but this verse is so good. How is revival? How is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit? How is God going to restore his churches? How is God going to do this? How is God going to? I'm just telling you all, listen, this is a word from the Lord. If my people, if, 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 if. The word if is, is a is a transitional word saying, if you do this, I'll do that. But we will not get God's blessings if we do not turn. If my people, how many of y'all are God's people? I am, I'm proud to say I'm a Christian. It just says, if my people who are called by my name, my name, my name, my name. Watch what he says, here it is. Humble themselves. Pray. Seek my face. And turn from their evil ways. Repent. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Hallelujah. Repent. Repent. And even every doctor who has, who's ever performed an abortion, if they would humble themselves, fall on their knees, and turn from their evil ways, God would forgive them, God would love them, and God would restore them. I promise you, even the worst criminal in a state penitentiary, God wants to forgive us. God wants to heal us. God wants to restore us. But it's on us. It's on us. Quit, look at me. Quit blaming the people around you. I'm talking to you, sir. Ma'am, I'm talking to you. If my people would humble themselves, you'll never, I hear, I hear, you'll never see me at that altar. Well, you just told on yourself. You'll never see me uh, pray like that. <laughs> Here's what I've noticed. Sometimes God will allow a tragedy in your life to humble your rear end. Yeah. I feel I'm at the right house today. 
So, here's what we're going to do. Praise team, you guys come. I'm asking Elkhorn to do three things. Everybody say three things. Three simple things before November the 3rd. Just three. Everybody say just three. Just three. Here it is. You ready? Number one. And Aaron's going to put this on the big screen. I want us to pray. Now listen, Monday night, November the 2nd. Monday night, November the 2nd at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary. We're going to have a prayer service. Yeah. We're going to have prayer service. Brian, what are we going to pray for? <laughs> listen, <laughs> we may be here for a while. We got a lot to pray for. Lots that our, our nation, my heart breaks for our school systems, bless their hearts. The governor's getting ready to make a big decision because we're a red state now. We're in critical care right now. There's a lot of things going on. Listen to me. I, I can't believe I'm standing before a church and begging y'all to pray. <laughs> begging us to pray. Begging us to pray. Prayer changes everything. Prayer saved me. Prayer healed me. Prayer restored me. Prayer gave me a wife. Oh, that's good, somebody. I don't know who you are out there single. Prayer changes everything. But listen, Monday night, November the 2nd, at 7 p.m. in this sanctuary, we're going to pray. We're going to come together and we're going to pray. Number two, I want us to fast. Fasting is a biblical principle. November the 1st through the 3rd. I'm asking you off the street, 1st, 2nd, 3rd. If you can't listen, if you can't do without food for three days, and if you're a diabetic like me, i got to be very careful, but there's, call me, text me, say, Brian, I'm a diabetic, how, how can I fast? I'll give you my menu. It's hard, it's tough. But I'm telling you, fasting changes things. How many of y'all know Jesus fast? He did. 40 days and 40 days. Man, listen, y'all think three days is 40 days. And if you need to lose weight, that's, no, I'm joking, don't do it. ADHD right there, I'm sorry, y'all. Pray Monday night, November 2nd, 7 p.m. in the sanctuary, fasting, November the 1st through the 3rd. And listen to me, vote. Pray, fast, vote. Pray, fast, vote. Pray, fast, vote. Everybody say that. Pray, fast, vote. Tuesday, November the 3rd. Look at me. You know what they said, Greg? 25 million Christians don't vote each year. Check me out. 25 million so-called evangelical Christians worldwide. 25 million? I'm just telling us to pray, to fast, and vote. Pray, fast, and vote. Tuesday, November the 3rd. How many of y'all want to change the generation? And listen to me, whether Biden gets in or Trump gets in, God's already in. Y'all hear me? My, this, this country is not governed by a president. We've done figured that one out. God is good. He's faithful. So church, we're not going to sit back. We're not going to be still. We're not going to be quiet and silent and hush. And hope our nation just gets better. I hear that all the time. Boy, I hope she gets better. But we're not praying. We're not fasting. We're sitting back. We're being silent. We're not, we're not saying anything. It's time to stand up, pray up, speak up, and vote up. And I'm not apologizing for this sermon today. I want God to bless you. I want God to bless this church. I want God to bless our leadership and our, I want God to bless me. I want God to be glorified. But listen to me, America's in trouble. It's bigger than racism, y'all. It's bigger than looting. It is. Don't get mad at me. S I N. S I N. And that little, that middle initial, initial is I. You take care of I, and God will do the rest. How many of y'all are glad you're, you're here today? How many of y'all are glad that 
that God spoke to you today. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise in here today. Amen. I love y'all so much. Pray fast vote. Pray fast vote. Pray fast vote. Yeah, everybody stand up. Y'all look beautiful today. Amen. Listen, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say, I want to say something to you. Thank y'all for loving Jesus. If I'd have went to New York and preached this sermon, I probably wouldn't have went back to come back to Kentucky. Travis, I don't need the security team back here to back me up because I'm going to get off the stage. Four years ago, Travis Begley had to walk me home because I got attacked right here in this church. Yeah. You say, Brian, really? That happens? Oh, yeah, when you preach Jesus, hell gets upset. And the religious people really get upset. They really, really get upset. So I love y'all with all that I am. And I gave you the Word of God today. I delivered it with all that I am. Not to condemn nobody. I'll never tell you how to vote. But listen to me. Voting is important. Voting is important. Go out and vote. Go out and vote. Y'all hear me? Vote. So we're going to pray. We're going to fast. And we're going to vote. And it's starting. Listen to me. It's going to start right now at this altar. Right now at this altar. Let's bless America. Let's bless the United States. Amen. Father God, in Jesus Christ's name.